Welcome back and in this video we're going to talk about the absolute basics of starting your project in RenPy and meeting Eileen actually who's a, a lovely young lady who you'll get to know very shortly. Now I am using the Atom editor but this will all work exactly the same in the standard RenPy editors. Um, you'll just need to um, sort of tolerate the slight difference in the way things look. There is a link to the Atom um, editor in the description for this video, um, so feel free to download it if you want to. So I'm assuming that you've downloaded and installed RenPy and you're now being presented with this screen more or less minus a few bits and pieces over here. Um, so what we're going to do is start a new project. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create a new project down here. And once we click on that, it will say you'll be creating an English language project. Change the launcher language and preferences to create a project in another language. So if you're watching this video, I assume you're uh, an English speaking person, so you don't need to do anything there. So you just click continue. And now we need to give our project a name. So for this purposes, I'm going to call this tutorials. Um, Fundy and click continue. Now we get to choose our resolution. Now there's no good reason to not do uh, the highest resolution. People very seldom you play these games in full screen, but Rempi scales everything up or down as it needs to. So you want the sharpest possible picture quality that you can get. So just put it on 1920 by 1080. Um, if somebody's playing on a computer that can't display 1080p images, Rempi will scale it down for them anyway. So it's no problem there at all. So we change that to 1920 by 1080 and click continue. So this is where we get to customize our first bit of the game. So we decide what color scheme we want to do. And you've got all of these options. You've got the dark gray background with the highlight text in these different colors. And then you've got the white background with your highlight text in these different colors. Now me, I'm kind of a bit of a fuss pot when it comes to these things, but you can just pretty much pick whatever you want. If you want to do a really girly looking game, you can choose one of these kind of um, more effeminate colors. But I like my highlights to be highlighted you know so bright orange is good on a dark background once you've decided what customization you want you just click continue again and it'll take a few moments and it will create a new game folder with all of the files that you possibly need don't worry if it starts giving you not responsive and all that stuff it's just doing what it needs to do it's going to keep flicking backwards and forwards on that, probably because I'm also doing some rendering with Das Studio at the same time as talking to you. But it's basically doing all of the thinking that it needs to do in order to create the project. So here we go. Tutorials with Thunder has now appeared in the project menu on the left hand side. And you've got all of these options. Now on this uh, side here, you've got, you've got the open directory. So if I was to click game, it will open the game folder where you can see all of the files there and you've got the images directory which is where you get to put all of your pictures when you start adding images into your game um, GUI if you want to add any GUI elements and so on and so forth now we have to edit our files so what we have is all of these files are the, the these four files are the basic building blocks of your game so we're going to click on all script files so that it will open all four, hopefully in one Atom window. Fingers crossed. We shall see. If not, it's no problem. We can just... There we go. So all of our files are there, all of our tabs there. So I've installed a package called... You have to bear with me for a moment. And if you're not using Atom, then you can obviously ignore this called Tree View Filter, which allows me to only display these three file types and I can get rid of all the RPYCs and so on and so forth because you don't need to be able to edit them. So I'm going to close that down now. 
So we're going to have a quick guided tour of the files that we have here. And we're going to start off with the uh, options, options.rpy. And this is where all of the basic configuration values are created. So as you can see, the game's name has been set to Tutorials with Dundee. You've got a show name called True. You've got the version, which is one, and you can edit all of these if you want to. You've got the about, you've got the build name, and all of it. So basically, all of your configuration variables can be set within this file. And then in the next, we have the GUI, and this is where we take a lot more um, configuration. We set the, for example, the accent color is that bright orange, the idle color is kind of a gray and so on and so forth. So in the GUI section, you've got a lot of your variables for your kind of displayables are set in here. And we'll go through these in a lot more detail within later videos. Screens, this is where all those variables now get transformed into um, what we see on the screen effectively, which again, we will cover in later videos. But for now, you just need to know that that's what that file does. And then script is where things actually start happening. So these three files are read and then we come into script. And the game automatically defaults at label start. So label is a way of telling the game that this is a position in the game and then start is like the default place for the game to start. Before we start the game, we want to define our characters, which have been done here, are default, as you can see, Eileen, as I mentioned to you before, default E, character Eileen. So what we're saying here to RenPy is that whenever we type the letter E on its own in our script, that we are referring to the character Eileen. And we're gonna, we can customize the way that her name appears, but we're going to leave this completely as default for now just so that you get a feel for what's happening. So what we're saying is the game starts here. When the game starts, we're going to say the scene is BG room. And we're going to show Eileen being happy. And then Eileen is going to say in speech bubble, in speech brackets, you've created a new Rempi game. Then we'll click the mouse and a new line will start and it will say, once you add a story, pictures and music, you can release it to the world. And then return says that's the end of this block of code. And so it will end the game. So we'll quickly do a test run of this and we will see what happens. Take a moment to compile again because I'm doing multiple things. So here we go. As you can see, Tutorials with Thunder, that's what the game's title. These are the variables that are set in the options file. Then we click on start. You can see Eileen Happy, BG Room. You've created a new RenPy game. Once you add story pictures and music, you can release it to the world. We'll click again and then it'll come back to the menu. It will end that run of the game. Fantastic. So let's say you wanted to add um, some text you can do E, which is Eileen saying the text, saying uh, Thundy am D bestest. And then if you just want the narrator or nobody to say it, you can just put simple speech marks there and you can say, yeah, that be true man. There we go. I don't know why I decided I wanted that to be um, there we go. Right, so we'll now run that again. Give it a moment to compile our script. Click on Start. Eileen, you've created a new Rempi game. Once you add story, pictures, and music, you can release it to the world. Thundy am the bestest. And then, as you can see, because I didn't put E at the beginning of that line, nobody's saying it. It's just text that appears on the screen. So I'm going to just click the close window there. So that's great. So why would we want text to be said there by nobody? Well, for example, if we wanted to add in to 
uh, game some exposition or some instructions. So for example, if I were to use some text formatting, I'm going to use a curly brace there and press I and I'm going to close the curly brace. That's uh, text formatting to make this italic. So if we now save that and run it again, we'll give you a quick look at what happens there. As you can see, that's now in italic, which is great. So we can now display text in italic and we can use different uh, text formatting for different things, which we'll cover again in later videos. But that's the absolute basic. So if you wanted to create a new character, we're going to just copy and paste that. Let's say we wanted to define a character called Dave. Now you could either just use a small d or you can type in his full name with a capital D. It's case sensitive so whatever you define that to be needs to be accurate. So anytime I want Dave to say something I have to make sure that I actually type capital D A V E because if I do if I don't in fact let's do a let's do a something like that. This won't work and it should now come up with an error saying Dave is not defined. Let's see what happens. We click on start. There we go. Exception say a Dave is not defined. So we quit out of that. We're now going to give it a capital D as we're supposed to. We're going to save that. Going to launch our project. Dave, this won't work. As you can see, now that's worked. So that's the really, really basics. You now know how to add a basic character and get them to say things. And now you could quite happily just run your entire game. Um, you know, if you're just making literally a visual novel, you could just have an entire script of full of that, which would be completely fine. But in the next videos, we're going to talk about adding a little bit of player choice and adding some more customization. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.